Start the engine. Let's set our throttle full back to idle. So throttle is full back. Okay, so there's no like idle detent. There's no like cutoff position. Just you start off with it all the way back. Got it. Okay, engine start button cover on the throttle control handle lift. Okay, that's this button right here. I've already lifted it. Engine start button press for one to two seconds. So let me read ahead real quick and see what's going to happen. Okay, open the fuel shutoff valve left of the pilot seat to 50% when the engine reaches 600 RPMs, cranking from the electrical starter. So just like, yeah, just like we saw that little starter uh, component that I pointed out that would be running once that button pushed. Okay, yeah, that's what's going to be, uh, yeah, that's exactly how it works. Okay, so when the engine reaches 600 RPMs, and I'll be going off of this gauge, 600 RPMs will be just above halfway. This is 1000 RPM right here on the inner dial. So I'll be able to actually gauge it, even though it's not specifically, you know, the outer dial is for 1000 to 1100. I'll still be able to use the tick marks to tell me when I get to 600 RPM. At 600 RPM, I open up the fuel shutoff valve 50%. How does this work? Okay, so it's a mouse wheel actuated thing. Okay, so that's, that's closed. So I just need to gauge about where 50% is on that, and I'll, I think I'll be able to eyeball that. Or I could just press home. I think that would take me to 50% automatically. That might end up what, being what I have to do. Edge engines reach 900 to 1200 RPM. Press and hold sh right shift home to move the fuel shutoff lever to the fully open position. Check engine idle speed to stabilize at 24 to 2600, and EGT no greater than 650. Okay, so EGT... This gauge right here, no greater than 650. Got it. And uh, tachometer is going to be up at 26 to 24 to 2600. So right here in yeah, right here in this area. Okay. Then I check that the generator off light extinguishes as the RPMs pass through 4500, indicating normal operation of the generator. And here's my generator off light, which you can see is kind of hard to tell on this uh, the sun angle. But yeah, that is illuminated. It's telling me that I have power on the aircraft, except I don't have my generator running. And once the engine increases past 4,500 RPM, then that light goes out. And then I can safely remove external power because I have the generator providing power. Okay, so let's run through that real quick. I think I've got the gist. Okay, so I've got, okay, full back. Lifted. Let's press it for one or two seconds. I'm going to use the uh, the button that I have on my Hotas to do this, and I'll be watching for 600, and I'll come back over here, open this halfway. Okay, so yeah, I'll, I'll, this might take a couple of attempts. Okay, button depressed, one to two seconds. Okay, starts commencing. There's 300, 400, 500, 600. Let me go for 50%. Okay, I could hear it coming up. I don't think that did it. Go a little bit op more open. Okay, 50% coming up through... Oh, I don't think that's going to do the job. I'm going to have to give that one another attempt because I couldn't gauge accurately where 50% was. So... Okay, I'm going to uh, run the risk of... Uh, of a hot start on the engine, I think that might be might be uh, mentioned in the manual. And a lot of times, what will happen here is if you abort a start for in a case like that, you'll still have residual fuel just kind of um, uh, left over in the in the system. So once that if that stuff started to ignite, then you could, uh, depending on where it's at, you could overheat the engine, and a lot of other bad stuff has to go on. But okay, so let me try that one more time. Okay, I've just got to gauge where 50% is. I don't want to do it using a keyboard command. I want to do this kind of um, on my own. Okay, so it's just uh, it's just one really good twist of the uh, twist of my uh, of my mouse wheel. Okay, so I've got idle. Go again. Pressing button. Okay, starters engaged. Release button. 300, 400, 500, 600. 50%. That sounds a little bit better. Uh, what was next? Um, 900, 1200, all the way open. So let me open it all the way.
That's, ah, that's frustrating. Okay, well, I'll just do it with the keyboard command because I obviously don't have the, uh, I just can't do it by feel, obviously. I hate using keyboard commands for this, but I guess I have no choice. Okay, I'll let it spool down for a second and then go for this one more time. Ah, frustrating. Okay, starter engaged. I would also worry about overheating the starter. Okay, 600, 50%. Okay, 900. Full open. Okay, I got past it that time. I think I was just... Uh, I don't know if... I, it might have just had the timing off on that a little bit, but... Or I might have just not had it exactly at the 50% setting. I think that... I'll, I'll be able to get that, I'm sure. It'll just take a little, uh, a little feel. And that, um... Okay, so I've got an ATC communication coming in, and I'm stabilized at about uh, 12, or I'm sorry, 25, 2600, which is within the limits. EGT, no greater than 650. Okay, it's stabilized about 490, 492 or so. And, okay, I've got my generator light still on. That's going to extinguish once I go past 4500 RPM. Now, okay, that's what I was supposed to do right there. Okay, let's go ahead and increase the engine power to 45, or I'm sorry, to 5,000 RPM. It'll be right here, 6 o'clock position on the dial. Okay, I've got the AI helper coming up. It's not being very helpful right now. It's just distracting me. Okay, generator light out past 4,500. And let me just uh, carefully stabilize it right there at 5,000. It spools up so quickly that you can... Or, I'm sorry, so slowly that you could easily just kind of get the, uh, the wrong setting. Because it takes a while for it to stabilize. Okay, that's it. 5,000 RPM. Okay, generator light out. Now I can contact the ground crew to disconnect ground power. I will do that now. Let me go to F11. F8. And ground power off. Okay, copy, and ground power is now off, and we're now running off the generator itself. Uh, yes, I know, remove wheel chocks. I'll get to that later. I'm not ready to do that. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, battery switch on. And now I want to do battery switch on. Really, in this case, instead of depleting the battery, since I have the generator running, it's actually going to charge the battery. And if I do happen to lose the generator, the battery will... It's tied into the same bus, so the battery will pick up the loads. So, let me, let me ops check that real quick. I'm going to kill the generator, but I'm still going to have power because the battery is on. Yep, there we go. Generator back on. I, it never told me to check my voltage. I'll, I'll do that real quick. So, to press it, voltage is up around 30 volts, which is a little bit high. I would have expected something more like a little 28 volts or maybe a tad less, but okay. It seems within uh, within reason, and I'm pulling, what, 40, 50, 60, 70, I'm pulling about 55 amps, which I don't know if that's, uh, if that's good or bad on the MiG-15, to be honest, but, okay, that'll work. Okay, now let's close the canopy, left control C, or, what are you, you are right canopy lever open close, you did nothing. Same thing for the left, I uh, had one more up here. Okay, that was the that was the trick. Do the top one. Okay, canopy closed, and I would um, I would assume lock. I saw I saw all this stuff just kind of. Um... Okay, yeah, just uh, I can see what happens now. The tooth just kind of okay, as it slides forward, it engages right here. And is there a mechanism? There's something I'm supposed to throw to lock it. I think it just locked automatically. You pay attention as this closes. Okay, it engages. I'm going to assume that that's closed and locked. Maybe it'll tell me once I get into the procedure. Okay, I think, yeah, I, I think that's all there is to it. I don't think there's a separate lock control. But if, uh, if I run across one, I'll be sure to uh, engage it. Now, let's pressurize the cockpit by turning the pressurization valve until the pointing index moves past the gray mark to the X, blue, cold air, yellow, warm air, or red hot air 
position, and then I turn the pilot's oxygen supply valve on. Oxygen was over here on the left side. Let's take care of this first, and let's go ahead and uh, get some air coming in here. Uh, this valve is what it's pointing to, pressurization cockpit air valve. Okay, so I've got, okay, there's the blue cold setting with the intermediate yellow setting, and then I've got the hot setting. We're going to leave it in the blue cold setting for now. That would be a good opportunity to go to the bleed air system and have a look at how this works. I'll be right back. Okay, this is a this is kind of a neat system. Let's look at what all is going on here. Now, on the diagram, air off of the engine. This is bleed air coming off of the uh, off of the uh, engine compressor is fed into a filter. It's hot, very hot air coming in, but it goes to the filter, and then it splits off into two directions. It goes like a direct shot back to this valve with hot air, and then it goes an indirect shot back into the aft fuselage where it gets uh, cooled off a little bit, and then it also feeds. So you see the red is the hot line, the blue is the cold line. Now the hot line is this one that you see feeding in from aft to front. The cold line is the one that's feeding in from uh, front to front to rear. <laughs> so what's happening here is that this is uh, this is really just kind of a valve that's controlling the mixture of hot or the ratio of hot to cold air as it goes in. So if I turn it over here into the red portion, more air from the hot supply line is being provided to the system than from the cold supply line. If I go to the middle, it's an even mix. If I go to the blue, it's more cold than hot going in. Now, I'll leave it, yeah, I'll leave it in the blue setting. Now from here, what happens is that it branches off. Right, so you have, uh, so you have air uh, flowing from the top of the valve, exiting to the bottom through this duct. Now, this duct comes all the way up, and then I have little air outlets. I think it's, I think it's this line right here, now that, now that I look at it. You can see the little holes on the top of this line. That's where the air off of that valve is going. So I have those on either side of the canopy. And I have also, down at the bottom around my feet, I have uh, kind of a similar situation. So, yeah, that's how the cabin pressurization and how the ventilation system and the, uh, the temperature control works. It's all just kind of through that valve, just a mixture of hot and cold air coming off of the, uh, uh, just bleed air coming off of the... Uh, engine uh, engine turbine or I'm sorry the uh, engine uh, compressor okay and then uh, I hadn't really figured out exactly what's going on right here but I think this is like a uh, maybe like an emergency relief valve or maybe this might also be tied into getting some air off of that system as well but I have an open and close lever right here it starts in the closed position I think what would happen if I went to the open position I can see that there's a it doesn't label right here but that's a, like a little check valve and this might be what I'm opening and closing right here, so I can uh, vent air uh, through the uh, the fuselage to the right side. I wonder if I would be able to see like where it vents. No, I don't see anything obvious, like a panel or anything. It's probably just kind of uh, maybe under the skin, or maybe it's there. It's just not kind, just kind of not uh, not included. But yeah, I think that's going to allow me to uh, just have a, a means of. Uh, no, uh, I take that back. You know what that is? That's that's probably like a pressure relief valve right there. So, that well, I I don't know. <laughs> I can't tell what this is. Maybe once I get a hold of the translated manual, that'll have a little bit more. Or uh, maybe somebody is familiar with this type of system and can tell me the function of this valve in relation. Is that a pressure relief valve or is that just a a dump valve uh, that would allow me to dump uh, cockpit pressure? in case of like fumes in the cockpit or any other kind of like an emergency. So yeah, if you have your own theory on the function of this little valve and this little duct right here, yeah, let me know. But I'll I'll move on from here and uh, go to uh yeah, I'll go to some uh some more stuff. So let me see where were we? Okay, so that was the cockpit pressurization and the basically the ECS system, environmental control system part of it for the aircraft. Now I need to come over to the oxygen system.